What is going on guys, it's Nat here, and welcome to the 2018 Dark Knight guide video. And I saw a lot of guides on like online about the Dark Knight, but it's all written, and I felt like there wasn't really any videos about this, so I felt like I should make a video to help some people out, so I hope you guys enjoy. Alright you guys, let's start out with the 5th drop skills first. Let's talk about Spear of Darkness. It has 100% crit, ignored target defense by 50, and it's a 10 second cooldown. It also has really long range. This is right here is what it looks like. And it reminds me of that one skill from that, that uh, anime show, Fate Stay Zero Night. Zero or something like that. I probably butchered that name, but you guys know what I mean. Um, <laughs> yeah, this right here it really, it really reminds me of uh, of that skill right there from that show. And um, yeah, here's another uh, picture or not picture video, but it looks like here and against bosses. Really powerful and low cooldown. Next we have uh, Radiant Evil, or I guess you can call it Beholder Impact. You know, <laughs> reminds me of Resident Evil. So you summon your evil eye and then you use the Radiant Evil, and it's really good because it's it has a 15 second cooldown and it has it only does two lines of damage but it, it hits a pretty good amount of area as you can see right there um, I think it's a really good skill you know uh, nothing much I can say about it um, it's really good against farming mobs that right there is what it looks like again and let's talk about the farming with this class right here so these are a couple of as you can see on the side is what I recommend using when farming you don't have to use all of them and you can see I put blitz shield on there not recommended the only reason why I have it is because my character was a paladin and I use it on when I use the paladin but I wouldn't recommend using Bl uh, blitz shield but it's there um, yeah I f if you notice I time out the skills pretty great like I use see right there that was nightshade explosion and then I use um, well, blitz shield there again but you can see like the cooldown of my area effects my area effect skills is pretty low you know beholder impact spear of darkness nightshade explosion they're all under 15 second cooldowns and you know if you just time it out uh, time it out great then you can use those skills um, and yeah, so the other one is uh, Dark Impel. That's like the main skill that you're going to be using when when those skills are on cooldown. Then you can just use those skills, which is what I'm pretty much using here. All right, you guys, let's talk about bossing. So with bossing, I think this class is very good against bossing and mobbing. And uh, so with bossing, there's a skill you can see right here. I'm using it called Gunnier's Descent, and there's actually a cooldown on it. But if you use Sacrifice, it takes away the cooldown, and then you can just keep keep on using Gunnier's Descent. Pro tip: if you use the Evil Eye, when the Evil Eye attacks, it lowers the cooldown on Sacrifice, so you can have it up like, like more often than usual so yeah Gunnier's Descent is really really powerful it does a lot of numbers of attacks and what's so good about this class is that you know he has decent crit damage I mean decent crit chance you know high crit damage you know ignore defense boss damage he has all that stuff that 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 a class needs to be a good bossing class you know classes that don't give you that they're they're just not good bossing classes and you know the Dark Knight it gives you that so I think for bossing I think it's very effective and then, I didn't talk about this before, but I want to talk about Weapon Aura with this class, because I think it's really good with this class, especially using Gunnier's Descent, or using it with uh, Spear of Darkness. And so what Weapon Aura pretty much does is that it uses the lines of damage of the skill that you use it with, and as you can see on the screen, you know, it adds these extra effects with it too as well. And what's so good is, like... Oh, first of all, I have to mention that it doesn't work for every skill, but it works for most skill. And what's so good is that you can use it with, like, your most overpowered skill and have it do, you know, this amount of damage right here and then use the lines of damage. And you don't have to use it on bossing. You can use it on farming too as well. You know, it, it looks like that one skill from Street Fighter, the Sonic Boom. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to the next skill. So let's talk about Magic Crash. So Magic Crash, what it's used for is to debuff um, buffs on enemies' heads, like, like how you can see right there. If you are using it to cancel out Weapon Cancel or DR, also known as um, Damage Reflect, make sure you, you activate Magic Crash first, okay? Make sure you activate it first so the bosses don't use it. You can see right here I'm using, I'm using it against Pink Bean. You see the animation of the DR, but the DR doesn't come out. Now, there's a cooldown. If you try to activate Magic Crash again right after it comes on cooldown, and then the enemy has DR, it's not going to work. It's going to just, it's going to say reset, as you can see right there, and then you're going to... 
you know, you, it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to go against their head. Um, that's what happens. But yeah, you can use this skill against pretty much any any boss that uses uh, DR. Like right here, I use it against Pink Bean. Feel my pain. That's what she says above her head. And then she has a DR ability. So using Magic Crash, you can cancel those effects out. So make sure you activate Magic Crash first. So then they won't be able to use Weapon Cancel or Damage Reflect. But if you're using it to just take away the buffs, make sure you just activate it right after. Alright you guys, let's talk about the hyperstat. So with the hyperstat, just remember that there is no one size fit all. It really depends on your gear, your equipment, what you're using, it really depends. So like right here you can see that this weapon right here, it gives me crit chance. My inner ability gives me crit chance. So if your crit chance is really low, then maybe you should put up in the hyperstat. It really depends. There's no right, there's no wrong to it. It really depends. The only thing that I can say that I guess is a one size fit all is damage percent. I would recommend putting up damage percent almost, not even almost always, like just always put up damage percent all the time because it make you so strong. For some reason, I'm seeing people put up um, boss boss damage percent. I don't understand that Be over over damage percent for some reason, like. Boss damage percent only works against bosses. Damage works against everything, including bosses. You should you should put up both of them, but make sure you go with damage first always. So that's my answer to that. Um, yeah, I, I like to use uh, in the hyper set. Me personally, I like to go with uh, crit damage because you know having a hundred percent crit and then having high crit damage, you're just so strong. Like you can see, like I I don't even put up. Um, you know, ignore ignore target defense. Like I, I don't I don't use that anymore. You know, I, I used to think it was all right, but now I, I don't even think it's good because I mean it's a good it's a good stat, but I mean in the hyper set I don't think it's worth putting up because I I personally feel like going with critical damage over ignore defense is better because critical damage is hard to find and ignore defense you can get that anywhere from items from like anything from so much things you can get that from and you can't really get critical damage and also you're just gaining more damage in general just if you just put up crit damage if you have high crit and you go with crit damage you just you're gaining more out of it so i feel like going with crit damage over ignore target defense is better and the last thing i want to say is for bosses, I think that uh, like going with crit damage, I mean, sorry, going with ignore defense is good when you're going up against bosses with high defense, like Pink Bean. But and like mo mobs, mobs don't really have as much defense as uh, as uh, bosses. So I personally think that critical damage overall, you, you just so much more damage. All right, you guys, let's talk about the V Matrix. What skill nodes should you be using? The first three is a must: Spear of Darkness, Radiant Evil and weapon weapon aura because weapon aura works it works so well with this class recommend using those three um i don't recommend using blitz shield i'm just gonna talk about this now because like it's in the clip uh blitz shield i don't recommend using because it's you don't need it it's just you, you know you have so many aoe skills for for mobbing you just don't need the skill the only reason why i have it is because my class was a paladin and i use it on my paladin also it's glitched in the clip anyways so I recommend using those three uh, skill nodes and then also like uh, a rope jump a rope jump because your character doesn't have a flash jump that goes up so rope jump is is really important and use a bind too as well and then other than that like I think those are like the must and then you can just like play around like maybe maybe use um, sharp eyes decent sharp eyes I mean, you want more crit damage you want more crit um, just fool around like it doesn't really it doesn't really matter there's no right or wrong to here I just personally think the the first three is a must to use actually maybe four for the rope lift and then for boost nodes like I think um, using dark impel is really important like you get a boost node with that and then just use pretty much skills that you like always use like dark impel is really good nightshade explosion is really good um, um, yeah, but the, the reason why I say those two is because the Night Street Explosion, it, it's, it's, it's a 10 second cooldown, it does good damage, and it's good for mobbing, and then obviously Dark Impel because it could be your main skill that you're pretty much going to be using. The last three, honestly, I don't really know. Maybe one of the Evil Eye stuffs, but it, it it's all up to you, man. This is just what I would personally use. Alright, so for the hyper stats, I didn't actually record it, I forgot, but luckily for you guys, there's a site called Ayami Love. So you go on the site, you go to Dark Knight right here, and then you just scroll down for the hyper skills, because I forgot, I didn't, I didn't record it, I forgot. 
And uh, yeah, so I would recommend taking the first two um, because it just makes Gunner Descent so powerful. This is like a must to take the first three. Sorry, I think it's the first two. The first three, take the first three. And I want to talk about the the one, the other three underneath that, the Final Pact. Personally, I don't think Final Pact is a very good skill. So how it works is when, when your HP hits zero, you get the Final Pact buff and there's a timer. You know, you have to kill 30 enemies before the before the timer hits zero. If it's a boss, then it's 30 hits. Now, if the timer hits zero, your character just dies. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that's why I don't I don't think it's very good. And because you're never gonna this skill, you're not gonna use it against mobs. And the reason why you're not gonna use it against mobs is because people just don't die to mobs unless you're just not looking at your screen. I will say. It, it do, it's pretty useful against bosses because a lot of times bosses, you know, sometimes you die from those one-hit things, like if you're not paying attention. I can definitely see that it can be a little bit useful, I guess, um, but I don't wouldn't recommend taking it. Another thing that I, that I that I am really confused about this skill is that it says if it, it, it says you have to hit 30 enemies, but if but if it's a boss, you have to hit the boss 30 times. So I'm really confused because. If it says 30 hits, there's skills that have, um, that does multiple lines of damage, like 12 lines of damage. Does that count for the hits? If not, then does that mean I have to wait for, um, like let's say if I use Gunner's Descent, right? And you know Gunner's Descent has a lot of lines of damage. What if it doesn't count all the extra hits? Is it just one individual hit? If so, then I don't think it's that great. But I don't know. I haven't really, like, got, I haven't really been able to test that out. But um, maybe you guys can be the first. Uh, but yeah, I don't think the skill is that great. I think the un the I think the uh, the the passive that it gives you is, is good. But I don't think the skill is that good. Also, for the last three for the hyper skills, I'd recommend taking the evil eye stuff. That's pretty much all I have to say about that. All right, so let's talk about the pros and cons. Let's talk about the pros first. So I think this class is really good because he has skills that give him ignore target defense, critical damage boss damage, crit crit chance, you know, and that's so good that you have a class that gives you a lot of that. And when you have Gunner's Descent, which does a lot of lines of damage, and you have skills that give you that, it just makes them so powerful. And yeah, so he has that, and then his survivability is really good because he has skills that give him like, you know, HP recover, and even a lot more HP, like um, hyper body, defense, like iron will. He has uh, moves where you can push bosses away or pull them to you. Uh, he has a lot for him, man. I feel like this class is like, he doesn't have, uh, he's not the best at one thing. He's kind of like really good at like multiple different things. And I think for a warrior class, I think he's like jack of all trades, you know? Like he's not the best at one specific thing, but he's good at like multiple things. So I think this class is like for sure definitely worth maining. Um, but yeah, just having a class that has like all that stuff, it just makes him so powerful. Okay, so let's talk about the cons. So with the cons, I couldn't really think of much. So um, this class, like his mobility is kind of like meh. Like he has stuff like rush where you can like kind of dodge, I guess, like skills for like when you're bossing, you can kind of like dodge certain things with rush. Um, he has a flash jump that can go right and left, but he doesn't have anything that can make him go up. So I'd recommend using rope lift for that. Uh, other than that, that's like the only small thing I can like really think about about the class. Like he doesn't really have like good mobility. Like his mobility is just like meh. Like it's not good, it's not bad, it's just like average. I guess I can say average. And uh, the, the other thing I can think about is, because I know someone's going to ask me about this, about leveling. Like how is the leveling? Like honestly, like leveling, like from like one to like fourth job, I think it's just boring. And that's just my opinion. I think for most classes, I think they really shine once you get to like fourth or fifth job. So when I was playing the Dark Knight, um, like I obviously I used a skill change, like I, I changed the class. But just by looking at all the skills, I can definitely tell you like it's it's boring until you get to fourth job because his best skills are at fourth job. So I feel like if you want to have fun with the class, you, you'll probably have the most fun with the class once you get to fourth job. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't really think of any, any, any really. Uh, I couldn't think of any like cons for the class. I just think the class is that good. Like he's a class. This class is is a class that's worth maining because he gives you so much, and he's a warrior. Like what, what what can you ask for? Like he's a good bosser. He's a good mobber. You know, he's good in team in, in in team play because he has like he can give your team like more armor and more HP with hyper body. 
you know, I can't think of anything else. I just think the class is that good. So what is better, the spear or polearm? The spear is better because it does the same thing that the polearm does, except it gives plus five percent damage. Okay, so use the spear. Here is a Reddit post that was two years ago, so hopefully everything is still the same. So this guy here, he was pretty much confused because Nexon did some changes. So if I scroll down, this guy here, he pretty much answered his question. He was saying that the spear, long story short, the spear, it, it got a buff and it gives plus, uh, the, the attack speed is, is plus one attack speed. And uh, he gave us two, two uh, links right here. So this one right here on the Nexon site, Next on site, pretty much says right here, Dark Knight. When it, when you equip the spear, it gives uh, more attack speed. Same thing over here on the uh, the orange mushroom. Okay, so long story short, the spear is better because you're gaining plus five percent more damage. All right, you guys, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys are wondering what music I used, or if you want to know more additional information, check the description below. Um, or if you guys want to know um, like how I record or what I use to record or the settings or anything like that, everything will be in the description below. Anyways, that's it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.